have to clap. Finally, we don't have to clap. We don't. <laughs> we don't oh, do that it. was funny. What? Karen Evans, which I thought this was kind of cool. Karen Evans, to try to, you could tell, try to. The president of the NCS yes. up, up at the microphone. She, Yeah, go ahead. And she's trying to speed up things, right? She right. wants to keep it a quick NCS Rubin Awards. <laughs> and so she's trying to train everybody instead of applauding to do one clap. And it is impressive when everybody in a room claps at the same time, just one time. Right, right. And so she's trying to train us. And she says she had all these introductions, you know, oh, special thanks go to uh, United, not United Media, but yeah, yeah, Andrews yeah, McMeal. Yeah, 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 clap. You know, that and then yeah. also to King Feature Syndicate. Yeah, clap. Yep. And to uh, uh, Jenny Robb, who's here from the uh, Billy Ireland. They clap. And so it goes on and on like that. And of course, as soon as it gets away from her instructing us, we go right back to, you know, clapping. And applauding, right? But it was a really great uh, uh, try on her part. And then it, it just kind of fell apart. But I think it was super, super instructive on like how impossible it is to herd cats of cartoonists. Yes. Oh, my God. Well, she knows like, that. Like we went through a full hour and a half show and Lynn Johnson, for better or for worse, goes up and goes, did we forget the one clap? <laughs> well, Are no. we that dumb? Like we, <laughs> she literally went through it with us. You, I think you, one of us missed the joke. Because what she said was, are we not going to mention that Karen gave us the clap? <laughs> and it that was, was Lynn, a better construction. Yeah, that was a better it was construction. Lynn Johnson who had made that joke. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. was one of the one of a couple of borderline. This was the best NCS Rubin Awards in terms of not being inappropriate. That was the closest we got to really being inappropriate was a joke about the clap. Yeah. Whereas last year, if you remember, there was a couple moments where it got a little bit cringy. Well, I, I just as far as a fun history lesson, the the first um, uh, NCS Rubin weekend that I went to, and I don't remember how many years ago this was, Bill Keen was still alive. Yeah. And I don't know that he was the MC for the show, but he was absolutely a presenter at one point. And he came up joke after joke after joke. Yes. And Family Circus, for those that don't know, is a very family-friendly newspaper comic strip. Yeah. And these jokes were off color, and I was <laughs> I was sweating out of my shoes. I was like, "Ooh, Bill King, bring in the fire!" <laughs> <laughs> but Liz, I, I just totally like railroaded your cold open. You said you had a cold open. No, my cold open was that uh, I got to tell you. So Brad and I are, are facing each other yeah. across a mic, by the way. So the recording quality is going to sound a little different. Yeah. But it's fun because we are in San Diego together. And I have to tell you that doing anything with Brad Geiger, we're, dri we're driving. Uh, well, I'm like, are you going to wear pants today or are you going to wear shorts? Because it's a warm day. He goes, nobody wants to see these legs. <laughs> the last time you saw legs like this, they were in a bucket. And I'm like, how did you come up with that on the fly? And then we're driving around. And I was like, whoa, look at the smile on that lady. Because we rounded a corner and there was a woman walking by and she had this big suitcase, but with this m weird Machiavellian grin. Yeah. And Brad goes. <laughs> last time I saw a smile like that so he just knocked over the first national bank of gotham <laughs> <laughs> so i'm driving around with like a one-man joke machine and yeah. it's just a damn delight to see san diego uh but in general i want to say hello everybody welcome to comic lab the show about making comics and making a living from comics i'm brad geiger the creator of evil inc and the editor of the web comics handbook on substack and i'm his pal dave keller cartoonist of drive and sheldon and co-director of the comics documentary stripped and and this week's hour of comics advice and gossip is brought to you by all of our friends at patreon.com slash comic lab. So Dave, Dave, let's talk comics. Let's talk comics, my friends. And I have to tell you, uh, does everyone know how when you are thinking your eyes go up in your head? Yes. Brad trying to remember this <laughs> script of what we say to intro the show because we don't have the papers in front of him. I, your eyes rolled back like you were you were comatose. That I was, was great. I was trying to see the script printed on the back of my skull. I shouldn't see your optic nerve. That's not how <laughs> eyes should work. All right. So anyway, today we have a really special show because uh, both for it's fun to talk about, but also for those folks that have not yet gotten the chance to go to a Ruben weekend. Brad and I thought we would take you through what it's like to go to the National Cartoonist Society Reuben Weekend. It's a three-day event. 
where the main event is giving away the sort of Oscar award of traditional cartooning, which is the Rubin Award. Yeah. There's also a bunch of divisional awards called the, uh, the Silver Rubin Award. And then there's the Golden T-Square, yeah. the Golden Key Award. There's a couple other ones we'll get into in a second. But uh, it's fun to talk about just because I remember the joy and excitement of going to my first Rubin weekend. And this was your what? Second, second third, second. Just my second. Your second. Uh, now your old hat. Yeah. <laughs> Twice now you have been nominated for a Silver Rubin Award. And I want to publicly uh, shout out my friend. Two years in a row, Brett has been nominated for a Silver Rubin Award, a division award for uh, best long form uh, story with Evil Link. So congratulations. My I friend. appreciate that. That's very kind. That's very kind. So shall we start at the beginning? So yes. you, we landed in San Diego. We're here. It's about it's perfect weather as San Diego always oh has. God, it's gorgeous. And uh, the the event this year is in La Jolla, California. So Brad and I go to the hotel, we register and uh, it's, you know, it's standard sort of convention fair where you get the little lanyard. Um, you get a, a a swag bag. What was in your swag bag? Oh, Brad? we had great stuff in the swag bag. In fact, our friend Jamar Nicholas had a a, a, a sticker in there of a Philly cheese steak. That had, uh, <laughs> yes. that had NCS written on it. Also, like it, it, the usual stuff that you see in their pens. But the Billy Ireland Museum had a really nice pencil sharpener. And I know that sounds dopey, but when's the last when is the last time you had a pencil sharpener nearby when you needed one? They're just not around anymore. No, you, you, know? don't, you don't see them. You like see I, it's so that was kind of a, a cute thing. And of course, the thing that was really neat is that the playbill, which always used to be kind of like a, a side sta- saddle stitch kind of yeah, playbill, yeah, they did and a half folded. like perfect binding, nicer paper. And a really gorgeous program that you can keep, you know, as a, as a keepsake to this event that had all of the all the information and also all the ads, all of the people that were up for awards and their bios. They did a really nice job with this little book this year. Yeah, it was really it's beautiful. I'm holding it right now. And it's uh, this is actually keepsake quality printing. I mean, it's really nice. Yeah. M- matte finish uh, cover and, uh, and everything. Anyway, so we get there. We're, we're saying we're glad to handing and, and shaking hands and saying hi to old friends and i got very excited because one of my cartooning heroes who i've never met in 15 years of going to the ncs is uh, jim borgman yeah of zits but who honestly i really fell in love with his work with his editorial cartooning yes yes uh, and he mentioned that by the way do you remember when he got up to uh, present an award he, he he presented the awards for uh, editorial cartooning and he said i uh, somebody tells me that i used to do these but i lost my stomach for it isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which I believe. I do. And both Brad and I have tried editorial cartooning before, and you have to maintain a bile, don't yeah, you? In a your certain stomach. degree of anger. Yeah. And like outrage. You're having a, you're in a great mood, but you have to work up being, I'm very upset about this, you know, and I well, I don't have that in me. I'm just too positive. Not know? only that, but I mean, I, I, I mean, I know we sound like old men when we go down this road, but... There, our, our discussion of politics has changed drastically from the 1980s to the 1990s to the 2000s to the 2020s. Uh, politics are way more vicious now than they yeah, used to be. Yeah. And it could be because the stakes are higher than they used to be. But to be a political cartoonist today, I remember that old Doug Marlette book. He would talk about every now and again getting death threats. And, but it was like an, a, a, you know, kind of a now and then thing. Right. I would imagine a political cartoonist gets that on the regular today, yeah. like on a weekly, yeah, yeah. if not daily basis. But I, I it was just exciting for me to see Jim Borgman because yeah. he's, he was a sweet he, guy. He's just a sweet guy and also great line art. Which, just out of curiosity, who's, who's exciting for Brad Geiger to see at the NCS? You know what? I got a little bit uh, giddy about uh, walking up and introducing myself to Lynn Johnston. That was yeah. kind of a nice moment. Yeah, that's that great. Was kind of Lynn's fun. very nice and very funny. And a delightful person. A delightful to person to. to talk to, yeah. The one that, and, and it's, uh, this will date Brad and I tremendously, but the person that we were both excited <laughs> to meet all weekend was Russ Meyer of uh, Broomhilda. Yes. This was a comic strip. It still runs, but this was a comic strip in our childhood was in kind of every paper in america right. had the sort of classic six by nine book collections uh as they did back in the day and uh he is currently the longest running well you you describe yeah, the it. longest running newspaper comic strip artist in other by words, one person right his 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 whole thing is he's the only person he's he's he writes it he illustrates it uh i don't know about coloring but like that was never mentioned right. so i assume he colors it too but he's the longest running, like longer than Charles Schultz. Right. When Charles Schultz died, 
the whole thing was about he was the longest running comic strip artist. Right. And Russell Myers uh, surpassed him. And I, I no one you, talks about it. Yeah. I was going to say, if you're listening to this podcast, this is probably the first you're hearing about. It. He's <laughs> yeah, got exactly. no accolades yeah. other yeah, yeah, than yeah. what he got last night. Unfortunately, he wasn't here because I was really looking forward to meeting yeah, him. Yeah, he sent in a video thanking everyone for because he had gotten the golden the golden key, golden key award, which is fifty years of cartooning. Yeah, no, or is it no, just a lifetime? Fifty years was the golden T square, which was won by Bill Hines. Yeah, right? golden key, I think, is just like a you know, congratulations, you're a great guy. You're a great person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it is a nice. It is a, both of them were very nice. The golden T square. I went over and uh, Bill Hines's family was passing it around and i said do you mind if i hold it and it weighs a solid 10 pounds that award is it like real it's, gold? it's that's not well, no but it's it's real gold <laughs> gold adjacent it's the national cartoonist <laughs> society brad no one's no one's swinging around a gold t-square the gold key is like the uh hall of fame hall of fame okay. whereas the gold t-square that bill hines got that i know was for 50 years in cartooning because i sat there talking to phil folio who was there by the way one of the best dressed people in the room i phil know folio. so dapper unbelievable so dapper I was talking to him and, you know, we got talking and, you know, he kind of he's like, I wonder how far back how they uh, how do they count 50 years? Because, you know, Phil goes back to doing like fan art for certain publications right, for, for sci fi. Who does Hugo that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Does that count or not? And I just looked Phil up. And if you count like his first comic strip, what's new with Phil and Dixie? That was 44 years ago. Phil is in coming the up zone on, coming up to on be it. a gold. Oh, no wonder he was winner. no wonder he was curious about it That's yeah. <laughs> i don't think he would ever bring it up himself but i i'll bring it up yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah. I think we've got a, a definite candidate there so it's it's a it's a uh, you're basically a lot of these events are taking place in um in either hotel lobbies hotel yeah. bars hotel conference rooms um it's it's usually it's mostly the cartoonists oftentimes their spouses rarely their kids usually their yeah. adult age kids mm -hmm. are coming along um, and so the first thing we do is we all hop on buses to go to the new uh, Comic-Con Museum, San Diego Comic-Con Museum, which in 25 years of going to Comic-Con, I have never been to. It's only it's only open three, four years now, but I've never been to it's it. New. It's yeah, new. I've never been to it. It's in Balboa Park, which for those of you that know San Diego is a gorgeous public park that from I, I'm going to get the years wrong, but let's just grab a year. In 1920, mm -hmm. it was the site of the World's Fair. And they built these gigantic buildings for the World's Fair. And as sometimes happens, the city said, let's not knock these down after the World's Fair. Let's turn them into stuff. So it became San Diego Zoo, world famous. It became uh, Air and Space Museum, somewhat famous. Uh, and then we now have the San Diego Comic-Con Museum, which yeah. was the transfer from the old sports museum. Huge facility. Yeah. Frankly, gorgeous facility. Yeah. Terrifying flooring. We we'll oh can talk God. about that. Well, so you, tell, you tell people what my it reaction was, was so to the flooring. It was so funny to walk with Dave because it's like, I would call it great, G-R-A-T-E, not G-R-E-A-T. Yeah. It, it, basically, you're on, as you're going across the second floor walkway, you can look down and see the first floor. Yes. And, and you're just walking on a grate, basically. And you, I was surprised. Like I, At first, I thought you were putting me on. That it was like, oh, my gosh, I'm a little bit scared to walk across this. But then I looked and your hands were all clammy and you're, you were sweating <laughs> and you were shaking. And I'm like, D Dave is not kidding. You were really shook. Well, it was not like first floor to a second floor of a house. We were 60 feet up in the air walking over like an industrial second floor. Yeah. And this grating was OK. So I didn't it's the kind of metal grating that you don't. And from from the right angle, it looks like solid flooring. But as you get on it yeah. and now you're 20 feet out on it, it's too late and it's too late. And you're like you look down and you're you're 40 feet up in the air. Yeah. Scared shitless. Scared oh. shitless. I'm a grown man scared of walking across a grate. And every I did every not time enjoy we it. had to walk across it, I had to listen to David whimper. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like Winnie the Pooh self-talk. I was yeah. like, you could do this, David. David, look ahead. Eyes up. Eyes up. Don't look down. Don't, everything is okay. Brad's with you. You're safe. <laughs> He's with you. So anyway, we're out. And this is where we, uh, Brad and I gave two uh, show talks of Comic Lab oh. that you've previously heard in like, the last couple of weeks shows. We had two shows recorded in front of the audience because it was a beautiful amphitheater uh, space, but it could not fit all the collected cartoonists 
in one go. So right. we split them up into two shows. Yeah. And we and, and so like with the whole deal was group one got went over to one side of the museum. They got a docent tour and then they were doing a collaborative art project. Right. While that was happening, group two was in our theater listening to the first Comic Lab stage show. And then after that first hour, it was a switch. A switcheroo, yep. Group one went out and did the docent tour and the collaboration and group two uh, came in and listened to the second Comic Lab stage show. So for the first show, we had Maria Scrivan, Hector Cantu, and uh, Dana Simpson. Yes. And it was just a dang delight, all three of them. It was it was such a, you, well, I'll, I'll say this as a host, you never know as you're gathering people together for panel talks or for interviews, you mm -hmm. never know how sparkly or not sparkly it's going to get. Right. This first one was so delightful. It was such a spark. Like uh, Maria was a delight. Yes. Uh, Hector was such a fun talker. Daner was uh, uh, overjoyed uh, in in her points. It was all fun. The whole conversation was fun. I, I, I don't want the, this to sound like a backhanded compliment, but Dana was the one that surprised me the most. I've so. seen I've seen Dana speak before. And she's always good, but the de the, the degree of joy that emanated from yeah, her yeah, this past great. week absolutely filled my heart. Like I was not prepared for how good Dana was going to be. But it's hopefully it's the joy of being recognized by your peers as yes, a Ruben nominee. She was Dana up for was a, a Ruben yeah, award and very well deserved. Brad yes. and I talk about all the time about how. She is at the top of her game yeah. and just producing one of the most beautiful and perfect comic strips going. Like the reason she was on the stage is we knew she was going to be good, but I didn't know she was going to be that good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Maria was fantastic. And Maria, you, now you, okay. So again, cartoonists, we're all introverts. Some of us are not comfortable on a stage. Right. And that's fair. That's, right. that's, that's totally that's, fair. Yes. Maria was comfortable on a stage and uh, and and so she was ready to go anytime you threw the topic to her she had something ready to say yeah, it was great. which is always kind of fun to have on stage it yeah. doesn't come natural to everybody and, yeah, yeah. and that's you know it is what it is she was ready to go so you i i could watch her face and when hector was talking and by, by the way another good talker a really good hector was fun talkers. hector was fun yeah. yeah so when hector was saying something you'd see maria's face light up and as soon as he was was done. As soon as he got to the period at the end of the sentence, yeah, yeah. you'd go, Maria, what do you think about that? And boom, we were off to the races. And then by the time Maria was done, Dana was ready to jump know, in. It was, great. it was one of the few times that we had to do the least amount of work as hosts. We introduced people, sat them down, had a little chat, opened up the conversation, and then we didn't talk again until it was time to do a new topic. Absolutely. Which actually, I should mention what the format was, which is kind of fun. We've never done this mm -hmm. before on stage. Uh, for those old enough, we did it uh, Johnny Carson style, where the new yeah. guests would sit in sort of the special chair. And then as you got uh, introduced and we're talking and we brought out the next person, you bump down to sort of the couch. Right. And uh, the Comic-Con Museum did a wonderful job of both staging the stage and bringing out all the mics we'd need, these beautiful Shure mics that were gorgeous wireless mics. Can we talk about the staff at the Comic-Con Museum? Because we've done a couple of couple, two, three live shows and we've all, we've dealt with everybody and we've never had a bad experience. No. Let's make that clear. But Comic-Con, Angel over there at the uh, Comic-Con Museum was so good. I, it was like jaw dropping how good she was because we came out, we had three microphones and we said, you know, really, it would be optimum for us to have five microphones. And bam, there. five microphones. Yeah. yeah. It, it, well, at first, just, I don't know whether we can, but I'll check. Next thing you know, they they materialized. In fact, we didn't know that we had them. If, when yeah, we they, came they back, put them out. Uh, yeah. And, and, and we were like, I, I, you went off to do something. And I texted you and I'm like, these microphones just appeared. And then we said, you know, you know, it would be nice. It's a little dry. You know, San Diego, we could use a little water. We turned around twice and all of a sudden a deluge of water bottles. Beep, bop, 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 yeah, it's great. Appeared out of nowhere from people who were clearly happy to do it. Yeah. Like we're like, hey, yeah, we got your back. Don't worry about it. I got to give a real big uh, kudos to the Comic-Con Museum yeah. staff. I've it's it's we've it's something like that is an absolute joy to to do something because there's a lot of moving parts. Right, Dave and I wanted to record this. We wanted it to be recorded, which means well. we had to hook into the motherboard to yep. get one signal out from five different signals. 
that's its own thing. You got to check a couple different things to make sure it's working great. They brought in tech people, all of which was volunteer basis, by the way, because yeah. a lot of the San Diego Museum, uh, the Comic-Con Museum runs volunteer basis, yes. uh, the docents and whatnot. So anyway, it's just uh, as two cartoonists, it's lovely to see fellow lovers of comics and pop culture who volunteered the museum. We really appreciate Angel and her staff yeah. with all the kindness that they showed us. As a matter of fact, you, we did say that you've heard the last the, the previous two shows we probably shouldn't jinx it because we don't. We're not a hundred percent sure <laughs> that we've got those files yet. So we're maybe not, you yeah, didn't yeah. hear them. <laughs> well, speaking of which, between shows, so I run to the sound booth between shows because we got show number one going, show number two going. Yeah, and we got about fifteen minutes in between there. And mm-hmm. so, well, your old pal Dave Kellett runs to the uh, external device that I'm using to capture the audio, and I'm trying to check. Uh, this is a longer story than you want, but there's like a hundred files on this damn recorder. Yeah. And I, it's got an um, interface from 1984. So it takes forever to find where the files are. And, go ahead. And by the way, you're not out in the open. You're in a, what with the equivalent of a projection room. Yes, you're in exactly. A from a theater space. With yeah. a door. You're shut off. You're, you're you, in other words, <laughs> it, for anyone to talk to you in any way, they've got to insert themselves into that room. Yes, exactly. And so, We had just gotten done with a talk about whether or not any of the cartoonists on stage wanted to be retired. Do you you know what I mean? Like, do you want to keep working and die at your desk? Do you want to uh, do you want to take slow down? Do you want to completely give up cartooning at some point? All of which are reasonable ways of, of looking at life. And I'm manically trying to find the file on this audio thing. Mm -hmm. And an older cartoonist, I'm going to say he was 88, maybe, maybe in his nineties. Um, and uh, <laughs> coming towards the sound booth, it's Kane yeah. step, Kane step, and I and I said hello, my friend, uh, Kane step, and I'm trying to frantically, I'm looking at the device, I'm like, hi, how can I help? And he goes, uh, and I said, he goes, uh, are you busy? And I said, I'm so, I'm so sorry, my friend, I am. I'm trying to figure out if this works during between shows, but uh, what what only can I help small, you with? Only yeah. a small amount of yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, and he goes, I just need a second, and then. <laughs> God bless him. He launches into a 10 minute talk. (laughs) But the crux of it was so beautiful that I actually, I couldn't be mad because what he was saying was he goes, he goes, and maybe he said his age. He said, listen, I'm 90 years old. I'm a cartoonist out of Dallas. And he goes, "Uh, I just want you to know that all of my friends that retired are dead. Yeah. I didn't give up cartooning and I'm 90 and it's, it's keeping me going. Yeah. So I, I, for whatever that was worth uh, to, to share with other people, for me, I was like, wow, what a, what an interesting and lovely sentiment that cartooning, the joy of cartooning in his mind has kept him alive. Well, and also like here he is at, at, at his, the stage of life that he's earned and he looks at you and says, do you have a minute? And you're like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally stressed. You never said this, but I'm stressed. All out. the body language I'm, was I'm stressed. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm in it up to my eyeballs. And it, 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 with the perspective that comes with age, he didn't, he, he basically said to you, that's not as important as what I'm about to tell you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And in a certain way, he was right. He was right. Right. Unless, of course, our second show didn't record. <laughs> in which case, that guy kept me from fixing the problem. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. But anyway, so then we jump into our second show with yeah. new and old friends. Um, it was Hillary Price, who does Rhymes with Orange, mm-hmm. uh, Tahid Bandia, which, who does Crabgrass, and Donish Mohiadeen, which who is an illustrator uh, who has many huge clients all over the world yeah. and um, uh, currently living, moving into Spain again. Um, and uh, just a, a wonderful guy. All three of them. This was also a super this fun talk. This was a great this was group all, of people. We really lucked out both with all six of our guests that yes. they were really fun. Again, such a roll of the dice. You know these people, you talk to them, you love them. You never know how someone's going to be on stage, myself included. There have been talks where, you know, and I'm a good public speaker. There have been talks where I've just clammed up and all the jokes yes. went flat. Nothing's working. The crowd doesn't like you. You don't like the crowd. But oh uh, God, anyway, yes. this was also another sparkly talk. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but like uh, like uh, we it, a lot of folks that we had up on the stage, like we mentioned, were up for awards. Right. And this was no different. Donish was up for a silver Reuben. 
Tahid was up for a silver ruben in newspaper comic strips and won, by the way, yeah, for crab so grass, well deserved. which was so I, well deserved. I, I, I everybody, I, did you hear the reaction in the room when they called his name? Yeah. It was electric. People it were was so wonderful. excited for that. Yeah, that was and great. Speaking of which, Hillary Price also up for the best cartoonist ruben award. I did not know this. So Lynn Johnson comes up to uh, announce the award. Yes. And she reads the little card and she says, oh, my gosh, there's a song for this. She And then she sings at last and then reads Hillary Price's name. Well, I didn't get the full extent of that. Hillary Price has been nominated for the best cartoonist Ruben 12 times prior. Oh, that's what I heard. 12 times. I did not know that. That is I mean, listen. It is an incredible honor to be nominated for a Rubin Award from all your peers and heroes. Mm-hmm. And you're held up as literally the one of the best cartoonists working that year. But 12 times has got to break your heart. It's 12 times. Be. I mean, at what point do you go like, I'm not going. I'm not, I'm not sure going. I don't know that. I don't know that I can do this again. Yeah. yeah. You'd be well within your rights because yeah. that's that's emotionally Do you just draining. print out the speech and save it? You know, you got it in a drawer. <laughs> After year six, you're just saving the speech. Well, yeah, you're but, like, as we're here in the Bush administration. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or, or you find out that the file format is not supported anymore. <laughs> you know, oh, what was I thinking doing this in all this freehand? <laughs> I really shouldn't have done this in Quark Express. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy, better, that, was, better, that, yeah. was, that was my bad. That's on me, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to try to print this out real yeah. quick. Yeah, I mean, 12 times. I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've been nominated... Well, you were nominated this year and last year. Yeah. And there is, I mean, listen, we can be honest about this. Yes. There is a sting to not winning. I, I was nominated last year and there's, you can't help but in the 30 seconds before they say, and the winner is, you're a little bit in your mind going, okay, my first line when I get up there will be right. this. Right. I'll of course thank these people. I'll thank my spouse. I'll do that, that. And then and then it stings afterward. You're like, yes. who, who was I kidding? Yep. You know, you're a little bit beating yourself up. You're like, well, like, no one likes you also. It stings. And yet you've just been held up among all the cartoonists alive yes. as one of the three deserving yes. of this award. You should be feeling wonderful. It's a sting. Now imagine that it's not a silver Rubin, but it's best cartoonist Ruben yeah. and and twelve times you've heard somebody else's name. It, it, it's, it's twelve times because literally I can I can and I think this. Hillary to her credit has gone to every room. Oh, yeah. Everyone I've ever been to, Hillary Price is there. Oh so. hell yeah, yeah. I, and and I can tell you, my thought process went from and and I'll, and by the way, I'll, I I don't. You told me yesterday you were presenting the award. For online short form, which went to Sarah Anderson, very by deserved. The way. By the way, yeah, and uh, an online long form. And I, t- when you said that, we were in the car, and I, you kept driving. I just got my phone out, and I said to my, I texted my wife. So dot dot dot. They chose Dave Kellett to give the online long form comic. Dot dot dot. Because I thought, who'd be better? To yeah. give me yeah. my award, right? <laughs> just like they have. Oh, you're thinking like, what kismet? This is all, everything's kismet, coming up, Brad they, Geiger. Like, there's a reason they put Lynn Johnson up there to present the award to Hillary Maybe, Price, right? Because yeah, yeah. it's, a, it's a wonderful yeah. uh, a synergy kind of thing. So right? I, I was just thinking when they asked me to present for long form and short form comic, they just wanted handsome up on stage. Don't yeah. You think? They just wanted yeah. handsome. But, but, but no one else was available. Yeah, you know, you so. beat me to it. I was going to say, but, they, but for some reason they couldn't get <laughs> But Greg Evans was like, I can't do it. I, I listen, I'm tired. I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> so they got but me. Literally, as you read Evan Dom's name, which, by the way, also no shame. Oh my God, uh, tremendous losing cartoonist. to a cartoonist yeah. like Evan Dom. Yeah. Third voice. Wonderful comic. What storytelling, what line art. Evan's yeah. amazing. Yeah. But uh, I, I literally when went from as you're opening the envelope yeah i'm thinking my first line is going to be thanking my wife and you read evan dom and i go i've got to get uh, to the airport two hours <laughs> early make sure just that a complete I- 180 <laughs> on your brain <laughs> let's see i need to get lettuce i need to get rice yeah. i need to go we'll get, i think we're out of apples i'll get some apples uh i've got to go feed the cat you know that um yeah so it was it is it is a sting to it's it's a shame but again brad and i have talked about this before as as lovely as winning awards are 
they and we you should have heard this from every artist you've ever loved mm-hmm. it doesn't really change your day-to-day output your day-to-day schedule nothing to like to monday morning you still have to work get get back at the table and work yeah so uh but it, i am proud of my friend that he's been nominated two years in a row uh, for best long form uh, comic making and uh, and very, very well deserved. Um, so anyway, so we, the, I, I should give a shout out to and I think it is Jason Chatfield, former mm-hmm. uh, NCS president and tremendous cartoonist. The <gasps> format of the Rubin Awards in the last couple of years has been so elevated yeah. by uh, I, I can't describe it other than to say the music, the graphics, the look of the Rubens. It's just so classy now. Yes. Like it feels so modern yes. and classy. It feels like an honest to God award show. <laughs> it feels, I really mean it. And not a bunch of jokers who put yeah. on tuxes, you know? It, that, no, it, it really felt like official. Yes. Because that's hard to pull off with a bunch of cartoonists in the room because, right. you know, we, we don't take anything too seriously. Right, you know? right, right, right. But the, the optics were really great at the at the actual Rubin Awards. Yeah, yeah. It's really, and it is, for those not familiar, it is, we didn't mention it, it's a black tie affair. And so it's a lot of gowns and tuxes. And mm-hmm. um, I, although I don't think there's a rule anymore for black tie. They don't but establish it as a rule, but they hint at it. They say, get dressed in your finest for a red carpet event. Yeah. Well, that means tuxes, right? Yeah. For, yeah, God, yeah. for at least for people like you and me. Yeah. And for many years for Dave Kellett, it was a $99 tux that I got, oh. uh, I think, at the border of, of Tijuana. <laughs> and uh, let's just say that that Dave Kellett doesn't fit into that tux anymore. I mean, I want to give a huge shout out. Uh, you know, there's so many people to thank for the Rubens, but the greatest uh, person I personally want to thank was the belt that came with my tux for this yeah. year. That that belt was doing the Lord's work, Brad. <laughs> fighting the good fight. Fighting the good fight, that belt. So thank you, belt, for putting in the hours on that one. Hey, if you're listening while you work, take a minute to stand and stretch. And while you're doing that, we're going to tell you why you should join us on Patreon. When you do, you're going to get hours and hours of podcasts that we've recorded just for backers. And exclusive Patreon posts that go even deeper on Comic Lab topics. And access to our exclusive Discord server, which is a thriving community of professional cartoonists. So you can support the show you love and get tons of actionable resources for your own cartooning. And listen, if you can't swing a pledge this month, we get it. No worries. Yeah, yeah, listen, you can still support the show by rating us wherever you get your podcasts. Just leave a five-star review and a few kind words. That, along with mentions on social media, is incredibly helpful. Now, everybody, let's talk comics. Before we go too far, I want to jump backwards and back to that second show. Oh, yeah, because I did jump. I did jump us ahead. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. So what I, I because we had such a great moment there and the second show, we had a lot of the same topics, AI and social media, right. young adult graphic novels are hot right now. Uh, but we also talked about retirement. Who wants to retire? Who doesn't want to retire? Who can? Right. Who can't? And almost to a person, everybody uh, said basically they want to die at their desk or or at least they have no plans to retire. In a joy filled way. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Not like in a drudgery way. Right. Yeah. They wanted to keep doing comics. Hillary Price said, I don't know about the rest of you guys. I want to retire. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do this. Yeah. I've got. And she goes, I've got a life. Yeah. I want to go outdoors. She's I like, wanna... my partner and I love to go outside, for yes. God's sakes. We want to be outside, goes, which is I totally wanna, valid. Yeah. I want to be on a beach with a daiquiri on a floaty. I want my floaty. <laughs> and that floaty turned into a runner for like the rest of the show. I know. And then the rest of the weekend, such that like later on, I think we got a text or an email from Hillary. Yeah. She had gone down to the beach and by God, if there wasn't floaties everywhere, yeah. and she's, she's like smilingly sending us photos with yeah. floaties. It was so great. She, she leaned in, pointing to the floaty, sent us a photo saying, this is what I want. This, this is, is my, my floaty. This is my retirement. Exactly. So uh, I, I want to say on behalf of Brad and I, though, that a huge thank you to all the six guests who, you know, they come to the Ruben weekend to relax and have fun mm-hmm. and talk shop. And here we are putting them on stage, which is not the natural environment for cartoonists. So thank you to all six of our guests for their huge kindness of joining us on stage. And then we went to the reception, which was a lot of fun. We went it was outside on the patio of the hotel that we were at. And uh, they had a, a, a band playing. That was Mike Ramirez's band. Is Mike that Ramirez, correct? the editorial cartoonist. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that was his band. Yeah. And, and then you having drinks and sitting around talking to people. I forgot one of the, I talked to so many people that I really enjoyed yeah, talking yeah. to. 
One guy that I was a little bit giddy to talk to, Sam Viviano from Mad Magazine. From Mad Magazine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm still, you know, from that generation that cherished Mad Magazine. Yep, yep, and yep. Talk, and by the way, you, you'll you never meet a nicer guy than Sam. We had, I, I, we had a, a, it was one of those things that he was in with some people that I wanted to talk to, mm-hmm. but I didn't, and, and all of a sudden I looked at his tag and I said, do you know you're Sam Viviano? <laughs> <laughs> so like we had no introduction. Yeah. The most natural conversation in the world. Great. I talked to him great. for a while. Great. I, I just fell in love with him standing oh, there. I love this. For it you. was That's such great. a great opportunity. I did, yeah. And in the meantime, we were at a we had a great table. Uh, we oh. were sitting talking with uh, Jamar Nicholas, who, oh my God, is Jamar fun to talk to. Yes. I could talk to Jamar all day long. And then Lonnie Millsap, who was yes. also a dang delight. Maria Scrivan joined us at the table. It was yep. really a fun chat. Dave Kellett, always a delight when there's free uh, yeah. Chardonnay well, off to the side. They had good food. Yeah, like, they had, they had food. finger food there, yeah. but little in- empanadas and so on and so forth. And the food was actually really good. Yeah, yeah. And Brad almost got empanadas, right? That was great. That empanadas. was really fun. You- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, there was what did we went to a Cuban restaurant the night before? Yeah. What was it that you a cu- said? A, 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 a Cubano. No, no, no. The, you said you, there was something that you. Oh my god, tequila was, some, was no, it, it was, uh, uh, the drink. Was it ropa vieja that you had? Oh, ropa vieja. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. You, oh, anyways, delightful. Brad. First of all, Brad is a delight to travel with. <laughs> Uh, and it, it uh, we, we giggled the whole weekend. It's great. So anyway, we had this wonderful happy hour. Um, I think there was uh, King Features, the syndicate paid for, which is very kind. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had lovely conversations uh, with all sorts. of. It's just fun to, to mix and match with. You're talking to illustrators. You're talking to advertising cartoonists. You're talking to animators. You're talking yeah. to, to comic strip cartoonists. You're talking to online cartoonists. I, I just find such joy in those conversations. Yeah, I had I at one point and it might have been because I, I was a little bit tipsy by the end, but I just had to pull Jamar aside and say, I, you are an amazing conversationalist. It's it's so easy to have a yes. wonderful rolling conversation with Jamar. The, the, the conversation always flows, you know, it, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. like a couple of times I know he, he, he like asked me, well, what's going on with blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And all of a sudden we're, we're, we're just chatting again. And for a guy like me, I'm not a good conversationalist. I know this about myself. Sometimes I just stop. Right. 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 Uh, and I just had to tell him it was such a joy to talk to him because you just feel so comfortable. And and yeah. before you know it, you've been talking for 20 minutes, telling them all your life secrets. And, and it's like, wait, he what is a damn delight. <laughs> He's so good. He, he, by the way, not only is he an incredible cartoonist, he has a new book coming out uh, this fall, Leon, Worst Friends Forever, that you should pre-order. Oh my God, um, yes. But he's, I, I uh, in the future, I want Jamar to be president of yes. the NCS. President Honest of the God, NCS. He's so good. I would love, and <laughs> Brad and I kept needling him like, oh, I can't wait for your presidency. He's yeah. like, dang it, I'm not going to be president. <laughs> Stop it. But also, to be fair, I also see Brad Geiger being president of the NCS someday. <laughs> now that's really not going to... I mean, I know you're only two years in, but I really I, I think you would excel as a president. I think I would. Uh, I, I think I would over excel. I, I think it would be one of those things that I'm like, all right, I'm, we're, we're doing this, this and this. And I would I would throw myself way too much into and it. And your work wouldn't and get then, done. Yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden it, it'd be like, what are you doing about bringing the money in Geiger? Right. Right. <laughs> you know? But uh, Phil Folio was at the uh, at the reception. I yeah, got a chance a to talk genius, to him also, for a little while. Also wonderful. Uh, him and his lovely wife. We sat there talking for a while. Uh, Bill Holbrook. Got a chance to talk to him. He's I, I don't know uh, how I don't I, see, I don't know if it's public. He's got he's got some plans maybe on being near F- uh, Philadelphia in the future. Oh, and I'm like, fun. oh, if you get to Philadelphia, call me up and we'll go uh, go to the best yeah, cheesecake places. That's great. And uh, and yeah, we talked to Tahid for a while. Uh, at Tahid that also delighted. Again, I'm so delighted for him that he won. Yes, for comic strip newspaper comic strip. It just. I mean, he's really producing wonderful, wonderful work. And 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 we've had him on the show before. Yep. And you should go back to the archives and re-listen to that show if you haven't. But I, both Brad and I, Tahid, if you're listening, we are still so happy and proud yeah. uh, for you. It's well, such a it, great. I said, ended up saying kind of similar things. There were some, there's, there's a few people who I think for my taste in comic strips, there's some people doing the best work of their lives and probably the best work on the newspaper comics page for my way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Will Henry 
Dana Simpson and Tahid Bandia. Yeah, yeah. They are, and I'm not, and if, and if you know, if, 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 if there wasn't a fourth name on that list, it doesn't mean that I don't think the fourth person is doing good work. But those three people for me are operating at a different level. They're just, they're at the top of their game. Yeah. They all have such a unique style, a unique voice, and they just get the, the format of a comic strip, you know? Yeah. So um, anyway, so that wraps up. Uh, so Friday, the the morning starts with a business meeting, and this is just for members only of the NCS. So mm-hmm. all children and spouses and friends and hangers on are not invited to this one. This is just for the NCS. It's the board of the NCS, which is he- headed up by Karen Evans of mm-hmm. Luann and uh, Jamar, Johnny Sampson. Um, who else is on there? Greg Cravens. Uh, and who's the third, who's the last one I'm thinking of? Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, Drew was uh, John Ham. Uh, uh, John, John Hambrick. Hambrick. Yeah. Yep. And um, anyway, long story short, uh, all volunteer basis, by the way, these are yes. all cartoonists that are giving up their time and talents. And uh, they go and basically it's a, a big meeting headed up by the board and they talk about uh, the money for the NCS. They talk about the plans for the years. They talk about um, uh, how and the specific <laughs> the specifics of how the awards are given out. Um, they talk about the volunteerism that is needed and and is currently being thanked for. And um, it's uh, it's I found it to be really a worthwhile hour. Yeah. Drew Acalino was uh, the treasurer. Yes. And it was nice to see the amount of transparency they're putting into that aspect of the NCS. Yes, because I will be honest, having been a member now for, I don't know, 10, 15 years, mm-hmm. there were some years where you're like, what? Where's where's the money? Not in yeah. any malevolent way, but you're just like, maybe we could talk about where the money's coming from and right. going, where's asset. Or just and how Drew, much money there is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Drew, super transparent. And I want to give him a shout out for that. Yeah. He's apparently now going to do quarterly reports. Um, to the whole NCS via email, which is lovely. That's all you can, I mean, you can't ask for anything more than that in terms yes. of competency and transparency. So I'm, I'm super happy about that. And Johnny Sampson, let's talk about him. Not only did he design a really nice t-shirt for this year, which I genuinely enjoy, but he's uh, doing, uh, he's doing some outreach in terms of, you know, increasing membership and getting some people interested in the NCS. And he was showing us some of the outreach he was doing and you could the passion that he had for yeah, that was yeah, palpable. Yeah, it was like, like you really were happy. I, I don't care what organization you you are, whether it's the NCS or the or or you know the the, the uh, kitchen utensils supplier of the year. Right. If you've got somebody with Johnny Sampson's passion on your side. You can do you can move mountains. Right. With that. Right. And, right. and it was fun to see him really talking about what he does. The other thing in the business meeting that I found super exciting and encouraging was that in since our meeting last year at the NCS weekend, the membership of the NCS has grown by 25%. Yeah. And um, it's, I can feel it in the air because I'll be honest, when I first joined the NCS, it was a largely an old boys network mm-hmm. and it's changing very fast. It's really fun to see how, um, people who do what Brad and I do, either online comics or web comics or independent comics or, you know, uh, self-published comics, so much more welcoming. The, mm-hmm. the doors are open wide. And God, I would encourage anybody listening that if you have any inclination to join, to try it, because there's a lot of Zoom meetings, there's a lot of regional meetings. The Ruben weekend is really fun. Uh, I'm I'm all for promoting membership. Yep. Oh, yeah. I think I I, I think you should give a hard look. And what was that? What was their special? Was it was it under 16 years old? Or there's, a under 20, there's a thing called 27 and under club or that the 27 club. It. Yes. And the idea is that if you're a cartoonist who qualifies and you're under 27, I think it's free. Is it, I should have looked. It's a up. reduced membership. It was a reduced membership. Oh, maybe yeah. it's just 27 bucks. Maybe that's the it's maybe 27 that might be the stick. I, that might be the stick. I'm not. Forgive me if I if I have it wrong. But the idea is if you're under 27 or 27. Uh, you really should submit because uh, it's a great opportunity at an almost negligible price. Absolutely. Then after that business meeting, they had a couple of seminars. Yes. And the first one had our friend Jamar up there with two librarians from San Diego State University, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Pollard and librarian Pamela Jackson. They are, by the way, did you know that San San Diego State University had such a a passion for comics, historian, archiving work? No, both as a native of San Diego and uh, as someone who has two useless master's degrees (laughs) in comics history. I was so excited to see 
that San Diego State University has this entire program now uh, dedicated towards comics. Mm -hmm. And also just in general, the whole panel talk was talking about how there is a huge awakening in academia towards the power of graphic novels, of comics, of comics as an art form, comics as a historical artifact, as a cultural artifact, as a pop cultural artifact worthy of study, and how it's no longer just the the side thing that might be mentioned in a class, it's the focus of a lot of 300 and 400 level classes. And I found that super uh, awesome to hear. And they were talking about how they were uh, purposefully getting these classes built in different departments. Like it wasn't an art department thing. There was a history department that had a comics class. There was an anthropology. There was all of these different things. Right. And they were talking about comics and academia. They were talking about how to properly store your comics. Right. You know, museums and archives across the country. Yep. yep. What to do if you think you want to leave your comics to a library. Remember, they had the whole kitten talk it's like it's like you think you're giving them your archive and it's this big thing it's like giving somebody a kitten it is very nice to be given a kitten but you're being given a responsibility now right, you've got right. to properly care for that kitten and your art is no differently now they've got to find a way to store it store it properly catalog it yep. go through it yep and make it so it's just not putting it into a shell it's, it's not a one and done thing yeah. it's like a, it's, it's a, a commitment of, of decades yeah. yeah yeah so they talked about all of those it was a very interesting hour of uh of of conversation any it is here's a deal the topic itself isn't scintillating right you're talking about the, the the degrees fahrenheit that you should keep your comics archives at not not exciting stuff but with two people like the two librarians that were up there who, were, again, passion comes through. Yep. And, a, and a talker like Jim R., who was really, really uh, a great up there talking. Yep. Those three people together made what could have been a boring conversation into something that I was like tuned into the entire time they were talking. Yes. Yeah, it was great. It's, it's And it's just in general, you might think as a cartoonist, well, like, how does this affect me that right. uh, academia? and gives a damn and it's just it's it's a testament to the power of comics that finally academia is like oh this is an incredible art form worthy of all the respect i mean remember that in france comics are held up as the ninth art form right next to sculpture next to theater next to novels next you know right it is the ninth art form and in america is now finally finally getting the respect that i think frankly those those uh um House committees in the 50s and 60s knocked it down pegs yes. that it took decades and decades to come back from. Mm-hmm. And, and and it is interesting to note the difference that uh, European comics readers uh, take this. Yes. Uh, yeah. in, in Tokyo, Japan, uh, they take a look at manga very differently. Mm-hmm. And there mm-hmm. were some conversations, by the way, about Tokyo and Angoulême this weekend. But we can't go into any of that. But there were... We had some conversations. That's all I'm going to say. We had some conversations. We had some conversations. We had some chats. I'll tell you what was fun, too, about talking to the academics, because I pulled them aside afterward to sort of offer my services as a Southern Californian, if I ever can be of help. Mm -hmm. And um, the one thing I wanted to thank them for was they just, in their talk, they put up a map of the U.S. of all the known repositories of comics holdings and of study and academic programs. And I'll tell you, for future potential comic lab talks around America, Mm -hmm. I now have a map of great places that would be welcoming of comic lab coming in. And that's really fun to see. Do we want to talk about what we kind of quasi decided for comic lab? I think we don't because we still have some more talking. (laughs) So let's let's go back to the Rubin Awards. Okay, yeah, we're we're going into the black tie reception, the the uh, and and. The reception was great. You, you were standing out there having drinks. We did some uh, some funny photos with Which, Jason Chatfield and myself. Yeah, because uh, you guys were head to head in your in your yeah. pan, in your uh, category. Yep. Yeah, and we so we you know there was a lot of photos, a lot of chatting out there that was and everybody was dressed to the nines. Yes, and, and I gotta admit, there's a part of me that kind of likes that. Yeah, Dana Simpson sparkled. Yep, she, yep. <laughs> right, she had a very sparkly dress on that was gorgeous. I'll be honest, though, I made I made what might be considered a poor fashion choice in the sense that I was wearing. Was it is it crushed velvet? Crushed velvet. Well, there, it, it, Jamar it was, called it. What did he call it? He said it was the um, seat of the pants was definitely crushed. The rest of it, I think, was just, <laughs> just velvet. You but said it was, it was a bitch. 
It was velvet. Oh, it's definitely crushed on the seat of the pants. I want to say, I want to say, completely eviscerated velvet on the seat of the pants. No, it, I, so here's the problem. San Diego. I don't know. It was like high seventies oh, yeah. yesterday. Oh, and yeah. uh, let me just tell you, velvet don't breathe. It don't breathe, Brad. You, you were melting. Like every time I looked over at, no kidding. By the way, I was this like is a no Pittsburgh joke. steel was, worker downstairs. Was it was water not streaming down your face. <laughs> yes, it was not attractive. It was very uncomfortable. It was not. Yeah, everyone else was uncomfortable on my behalf. So I'm not. I'm going to give you a, a warning as a friend. Don't wear a crushed velvet tux. No. It doesn't. It doesn't breathe. It doesn't Although breathe. I think Dave Blazik was in a crushed velvet tux too. Yeah, uh, I, but he changed. Did you notice? Oh, did he, he really? He no, had a I second didn't coat that. that he changed. He into. did a costume change. He did. I was like, God damn it, David. I, I know. Yeah, I know. So he had anyway. a whole wardrobe up there in uh, his hotel. But anyway, so we had a cocktail reception out front. Uh, very nice. It was sponsored by Creators. I don't remember who sponsored that trick. Anyway. Uh, Dave Kellett, Andrews McMeal. Andrews McMeal. That's right. That's who it was. It yeah. was Andrews McMeal. Uh, and Dave Kellett availed himself of what what was called a rosé Pinot Noir, which I don't what know. What the hell? I know, right? Is so, that what you were drinking? Yes. By the way, it was delightful. Yeah. But I do you take a rosé and just add, or a Pinot Noir and add water to get a rosé? What, <laughs> what, what is that? You better hope it was water. Like I asked a bartender and he held up the bottle and goes, I have no idea I what no the idea. hell this is. Yeah. We're just serving it. That's why I had a whiskey sour. I know exactly <laughs> what went into that. I think it's called bottom of the barrel when it's a rosé <laughs> Pinot Noir. <laughs> uh, so we we all go in. It's a huge cocktail. No, not a, a huge, um, what do you call it? Ballroom. Yes. Um, I would say there's about 20 tables and then a stage up front, two gigantic screens on either side of the mm-hmm. stage, and all the Rubin Awards, including the massive award uh, designed by Rube Goldberg, um, up on stage. So you can see the sort of 10, 12 categories. And the yeah. describe real quick, what does the Rubin Award look like? And everyone should Google oh. it real quick. Well, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of figures that are kind of climbing all over each other, and they form a tower, and they're all naked. And, yeah. and, and, and it's 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 a little bit weird looking to yep. say the least, but it's also I think it's 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 solid metal. I don't think it's gold. It, oh, I have a story about that, but it's solid. But it's, it, is it is solid heavy as heavy. hell, heavy as hell. Because Hillary came around. We went around to, th- to uh, thank her for being on the stage show and to congratulate her. And, uh, and and I she, said, Hillary, I got I got to hold it because I'm never going to hold one in my I, life. I, I got to hold touched it. it. I couldn't. Yeah. I was and scared so to it's, hold it's, it. It was, it was so heavy. And I, talking to Greg Evans afterward, apparently the Rubin Award weighs more than the Emmy, the Oscar and the Tony put together. Oh, really? It's that heavy. It's, wow. it's a gigantic award. It was a lamp base that Rube Goldberg had designed for his own house. Oh and I God. think Milt Kniff said, let's turn that into the award. So they knocked the lamp top off. They had it re-sculpted into an ink pot. And that's now the award for cartooning is, the, is Rube it. Goldberg's lamp base that he made. Could you imagine being Hillary Price, though? She won the LC Cigar Award last year, which yeah, is a big did. Popeye statue. And now she's got the Rube Goldberg. What a validation, though, yes. right? No wonder she's like, you know what? I'm going to go to a floaty. I've, I've yeah, done it. Yeah. I, I did what I set out to do. Were you there when her partner said, yeah, she's got both of those, but the one she really values is a big hockey stick from a tournament that she won? <laughs> was, I, I'm not sure I'm getting all the details, but there, there's a big hockey that's stick delightful. that's the real center that's point delightful. of the trophy yeah. shelf. Yeah. And all the Silver Rubin Awards are plaque-based awards. Yes. Um, and they are, they're also gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, and so anyway, so- As you know, because there's one hanging in your studio. We didn't need to mention that. I did. You were so nice to me saying about my. We do have to mention that you're a winner of this award. A past winner. A past winner. Yes. And it was I was very honored about that. Uh, I you know, what's a bummer, though. It'll be it'll probably be a lifetime bummer. I wasn't at that Rubin Award where (gasps) I won. Oh, no, I didn't. How come I didn't know that? I, 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 that. I, I th- well, I'll tell you what happened. Did you do a video that you sent in? Oh, or was that before they were doing video? It was. I, I, I remember I put on a tux and I, I made a video. Can you find it? I, you know what? I, I wonder if I could. I don't know. That might be a nice comic lab exclusive. <laughs> Where would I have kept that file? I'll look on Dropbox if I have it. I'll put it on. I'll put yeah. it on Patreon. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so there's a, a series of speakers over the course of the night. A lot of fun presenters. Um, uh, I was one of the presenters of two categories: Lynn Johnson, mm-hmm. uh, Tom Richmond, I think, uh, uh, Jeff Keen, Keen, who was also at our table and was delightful. Oh my God! I was not prepared for how funny Jeff Keen is in person. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like he went, he uh, gave, he announced the Russell Myers uh, award yeah. for the gold, cha- the gold key. 
devastatingly funny. And yeah. also, I mean, because it started off as a roast, really, yes, if we're honest it about really it. It really was. And he had some, they had a couple of jokes that we will not risk. Are we going to repeat that joke? No, we <laughs> no we're not, not repeating that joke. joke. Not going to, but, and by the way, I'm, I'm making it sound like it was dirty. It wasn't dirty, but it was acid sharp. I'm, I, like, imagine uh, a roast that starts off this son of a bitch. That kind, it was exactly. that tone of a joke, you know? And, set the and then it's, it swivels into the love and respect that someone deserves yes. of a lifetime of amazing work, you know? But, but Jeff, to Jeff's not, credit, he did a great job. I wasn't prepared for not only how funny he was, but how, also how well he delivered humor in yes. person. Like, it's one yeah. thing to write something down and be funny, like he does all the time with uh, Family Circus, but to go up and perform like that, I, I, I my jaw was on the floor. It's like, oh, this guy's really good. Yes, really good. Yeah. And uh, so the the night proceeds. Um, it's a mix of of, of videography. We have stuff coming up on the screens as people are nominated. Yeah. And uh, physical presenting. Uh, and I, as I said before, it was a, just a joy to be able to hand Sarah Anderson her short form. <laughs> yes. Ruben. Um, she's always a delight. It was really fun to chat with her. And then Evan won and re- accepted by video. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, the whole event was really nice. It was it let's was, just as we're wrapping up the show to yeah. bring this show to an end. Let's just go through and talk about the winners. Chuck Dillon won for advertising and product illustration. His first of two awards that night. He was walking around with two plaques by the end. Imagine of the night. going home with two. Wouldn't yeah. that be great? Yes. How do you feel bad about yourself at the end of that a night where you get two of those babies? Do you That'd ever have to, to do the dishes again? How do you do the dishes? <laughs> a two-time NCS I'm a two-time silver. NCS silver Rubin yeah. Award winner. I can't do these dishes. We'll just yeah. eat off a of paper for now. And <laughs> you know, you know Chuck's work are from uh, from highlights for kids. Which, by the way. What a great uh, career he's had. I'm not joking. I would love to have Chuck on the show, both yeah. because what a tremendous public speaker. Yeah. Just a guy that seemed to be filled with joy. I didn't get oh to talk to him, but I would gosh. love to invite him. He's a good guy. And then also, uh, what is it like to cartoon for Highlights Magazine? Yes. I want to know. He had a couple oh, we got to have him on the show. Yeah. Remember he was talking about doing that one job that he was like, he was ready to kill the client by the end yes. of 14 months? Yes, and we won't say who the client was, no. but he was like, I, by the end of it, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Book illustration. Well, somebody from our table went up to grab that plaque. It was Tom Richmond. Tom Richmond arguably one of the best caricaturists in the world. I love Tom so much. He's a yeah. great guy. Um, former past president of the NCS. Yep. Comic book uh, division. That went to Jay Stevens, didn't it? Yep. And then uh, editorial. I actually forget. Was it Michael, Michael DeAdder? Michael DeAdder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so Michael won that one. And then for gag cartoon, uh, Dan Mazdia, who I did not know was the nephew of Patrick McDonald of Mutt. Neither did I. But, but they, as soon as he said it, it's like the, a curtain drop. And I was like, I see the family resemblance. Yep, yep, same build, same facial structure. I was like, oh, wow, I absolutely see it. Yeah. Graphic novel, Sarah Bollinger took that one home. And then magazine newspaper illustration. Uh, that one went to Nick Galifianakis. Yep. Newspaper comic strip. Everybody cheered extra loud for our friend Tahid. Uh, newspaper panel. This one was won by Wayno, uh, who actually has been putting in amazing work yep. for Bizarro, inheriting that from Dan, Dan Peraro. I liked seeing that. Wayno seems like a really good guy. Listen, th- that one you couldn't have gone wrong. Dave Blazik, Nick Galifianakis, and Wayno. Uh, there is no bad choice there. Dave's won it a few times in the past. Nick has won it, I believe. Uh, but it was good to see Wayno get recognized for a long career of really solid work. Uh, online comic long form went to Evan Dom, of course, uh, the harrowing of hell, the last delivery. Uh, uh, you know, we yeah. love Evan. I've, I've had him do a tales of the drive story actually. So yeah. I, it was delightful to see him take that one home. Online short form went to Sarah Anderson, but there's another one. You couldn't go wrong. Jim Benton, who's a really solid cartoonist and D fish. Who's getting recognized for her, uh, her work in comics. That has been absolutely outstanding. It was such a joy to see D get recognized yeah, it was, with the nomination. It was fun to meet D this weekend as well. Yeah. Uh, Variety entertainment also went to Chuck Dillon, who uh, made a hilarious second speech up on stage. And then we had, of course the six nominees and this to me, I know past years have had four and five nominees, but I kind of liked having six nominees for the Rubin yes. Award this year. Yes. Um, Darren Bell, who has been doing fantastic work, his book, The Talk, absolutely you should check out. Uh, Daniel Close was also one of the nominees for this mm-hmm. year for a lifetime and a continuing lifetime of great work. Will Henry, who we talked about before, arguably ah. uh, producing one of the best comic strips uh, uh, going in the world. Also uh, a short conversation I had at the reception and really a genuinely delightful guy to talk to. Absolutely. 
Uh, Hillary, who took it home, of course. Uh, Dana Simpson for her work on Phoebe and the Unicorn. Uh, tremendously talented. And then Mark Tatuli, who I think is another one who has been nominated many times. A lot of nominations for Mark. So, Mark, if you're listening, we we see you, buddy, on this yep. one. That's uh, we're, it took Hillary 12. I guess it might. <laughs> I hope I hope it won't take you 12. Um, uh, but anyway, overall, it was a, for me. It was a delightful weekend. Absolutely. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, honest to God, hanging out with Brad all weekend just just as the icing on the cake. This, this has made my heart really happy. It's this a nonstop a joke fest with Brad Geiger. Yes. I'll tell you what, it's it great. It is fun. It is a lot of fun. It is fun. And if, listen, if you're at all on the fence about it, I next year's Ruben Award is going to be in Boston. And um, as far as I understand, the NCS is going to now have three base cities. Hubs. in the uh, Hub cities is a yeah. better way to say it. And if I think I understand the plan... San Diego is now going to be a hub city on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, Boston, will, if it works out, will be a hub city on the East Coast. And then there will be a hub city of Columbus, Ohio, centered on the Billy, which is the big cartoon art museum and library mm -hmm. at Ohio State. And so if that works out, every three years, we'll just go, you know, it's in San Diego, then it's in Boston, then it's in Columbus, then it's in San Diego, Boston, right. Columbus. So next year we'll be in Boston. And if you're at all on the fence, try it one year. It is yeah. so fun. To meet all your peers and heroes, especially dressed up in gowns and, and black tie. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for networking opportunities, if you're looking for a sense of community, which Karen Evans, obviously, as we said at the top of the show, that's a big thing for yep. her. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to say, I can I can at this point endorse it. Consider becoming a member of the NCS. Yeah, they, they've done a lot of really good stuff over. The and I made a specific point. I should mention this during the business meeting. I said, I have. European friends that I would love to get in the NCS. I always, yes. I always mention War and Peace. I want to get them yes. in. I, I don't know why I'm hell bent on getting We're War and Peace in there. Their arms. I know, yes. but I was like, so what's the status? Can can European friends? Can Australian friends? Can can Kiwis? Can uh, friends from Latin America? Can you'll they join? Know, you'll notice who didn't make the list. Who did? Dave didn't say anything about anybody from Wales. <laughs> he does. He doesn't want. If you're from Wales, he doesn't want you here. You notice you didn't make the list. Oh. Listen, I made it explicit in the business meeting. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> that was my one request and they were like david your your unwarranted whales hatred has got to stop and i said get off me lynn johnson you can't hold me back and anyway so uh uh i know yeah so if no matter where you are in the world it is it's uh if the doors are wide open karen's doing a tremendous job of yes. making it a welcoming organization and frankly trying to make these ncs weekends sort of news you can use in terms mm -hmm. of Talks and seminars and and uh, forward thinking, forward facing kind of advice and best practices. And I love that about it. Absolutely. And with that, I'm going to remind you that you've been listening to Comic Lab, the show about making comics and making a living from comics. Your hosts have been my friend, the, the Silver Rubin nominee, Brad Geiger, the incredible talent behind Evil Comic at Evil... Oh, I don't have the script. So close. Oh, it's so close. Evil Link at EvilComic.com. And my friend Dave Kellett, former Silver Rubin winner, co-director of the comics documentary Stripped, and the cartoonist of Sheldon at SheldonComics.com and Drive at DriveComic.com. Can we quibble with the construction of former Silver Rubin winner? Did they take it away from me? Why is it <laughs> oh, former? Yeah. Did I die? That's Was it this previous? <laughs> previous. <laughs> previous. The Comic Lab theme song is used with permission from Andy Creighton at TheWorldRecord.net, and this episode was edited by Matt Woodard of Woodsong Productions over at www.woodsong.net. Media. If you love the podcast done by myself and my former friend Dave Kellett, you can rate <laughs> and review the show on Apple Podcasts and you may hear your review featured on a future episode. And don't forget to give us a five-star review on Spotify where we are burning up the podcast charts. And I will say the NCS Conference and Rubin Awards for next year are going to be August 14th through 16th, 2025 in Boston. I don't know the hotel and location yet. But uh, August 14th through 16th in Boston. And I will say Comic Lab is made possible by your support at patreon.com slash comic lab. So I will go ahead and say that twice. Patreon.com slash the in Boston. So I got to tell you, uh, getting ready for the, yeah. the Rubin Awards, Brad's uh, in his room tying his tie. And I just I just hear from the room, make the elephant, 
put the <laughs> put the strip through the hole, bring the elephant around. I don't what's going on in there. You tied your own bow tie, which yes. to me is an impossibility. I, I I've got about a thirty five percent before it was thirty uh, percent success rate, but you, you they've got all these YouTube videos. And you've got you like I just put this video on. It was a TikTok, so it would like restart at the beginning oh, and loop. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so he was just doing it over and over and over again. So like I do it as far as I could to keep up with him, and then wait for it to loop back, and then pick it up for where he was. But you got to make the little elephant trunk. Then you pull the elephant's ears. Oh, is that what it was? The trunk. Yeah. Oh, okay. Was so something like, about it goes an elephant? Down yeah. Trunk, and then the ears, and then you stick it through the back, and then like I just got it really really close and then i'm like ooh, i think i i think i can do this and by the end i had a bow tie tie <laughs> the best thing about having the hand tied bow tie as opposed to the clip-on tie is that at the end of the night you can untie it and look like jerry lewis in hour 23 of the mda <laughs> <telethon. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and i don't know why that's my fashion uh beacon <gasps> beacons we didn't talk about the lighthouse Oh my God! The lighthouse. Okay, <laughs> we'll hold have on. To save that a, for another show. No, no, we're doing a sticker on a sticker. We're, I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell you this. We're going in. We're going in, Coach. So Brad talks about. I don't know. I've we known, were talking about retirement. I don't know why my friend did this. We we're uh, talking about retirement, and I've known you for 25 years, <laughs> and all of a sudden you're like, I tell you what, I want to do. I want to retire to a lighthouse. Completely flummoxed. I've never heard this. <laughs> I have no idea. But so we make a whole joke of which most of you've heard on the previous show about yeah. the, we had a whole runner about the lighthouse. And then we, we wrap up the show and I'm razzing him after yeah. the show's over about the lighthouse. The rest of the weekend was bonkers. How many people came up to Brad about the lighthouse? I had so many people come up with thoughts about the lighthouse because <laughs> I'd read a social media post that said you can buy a decommissioned lighthouse. And this one guy comes up and says, have you ever been, have you ever seen a lighthouse get hit by ocean waves? <laughs> have you ever seen that? Do you, do you see how that shakes? And he was really like passionate. <laughs> you got to look at that. And then another guy comes up and he says, what Dave doesn't understand is Dr. Seuss worked in a lighthouse. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, and I called you over, you know, and yeah. he's like, Dr. Yeah. Seuss. Look. And, and, and another guy was like, people go, I, I had four people come up to me and ask me if I watched a movie. I think the name of the movie is called The Lighthouse. I, it has William Defoe in it. Yeah. And basically it's about how people go insane. Mad. Yeah, they go mad. When they work in a lighthouse. Right, right. And they were very concerned that you get, Brad, you have to watch that movie because William Defoe and the lighthouse and insanity and I and I told them on that front we had nothing to worry about. You can't yeah. what's what's done is done. Was, Brad's already walked that road, so it was, it's a short trip. <laughs> it's a short trip. To, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I've heard more about that lighthouse, which is so. I mean, it's so funny what people like zero in on. Yes. But now they had an instant in to talk to me. They just had something to say about the lighthouse, and we were off to the races. But you know, you want you want Jim Borgman or Lynn Johnson to come up to you and talk to you about your line work. Yes. You don't want them to come up and be like, "So you're the crazy guy that wants to go to a lighthouse." <laughs>